I know I'm a little bit late on this, but there was a couple of wild things going on over on JP and I wanted to cover the advanced quest. So, you know, I'm a little behind, but we do have the pre-release campaign for the most hype event of the year, the learning with manga collaboration. And you know, it's a super hype collaboration because we're getting a really good pre-release campaign. Even if you don't like super bunyan you don't think that she's very good or you just don't like her as a collaboration unit the upcoming event is actually really good it's really good to farm you actually get stuff out of it kind of like a miniature version of a lotto event it's very very strong and this pre-release campaign is actually pretty good so even if you're not hyped for the premier five star unit it's not a bad event so let's sit down and let me tell you what you're going to be getting for the pre-release campaign. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you subscribe if you like being informed on all things that are going on on both versions of the game and you like your daily FGO content. Now, the small thing that I guess we're getting towards the beginning is actually if you finished America, you know, one of the earlier singularities, you can do the Bunyan event, you know, the all the statesman one that we got, I think during the fifth anniversary, which is kind of nice i think bunyan's lost her niche a bit since she actually did release a while back if you don't know she basically had one of the quickest np animations in the game so if you had a maximum broken k scope you could just fire her np immediately plus she dropped buff for your allies so she was kind of nice to have but as we're moving more into proper arts buster and quick farming with the anniversary just right around the corner there's not really a place for that style of farming anymore. I mean, you can still do it if your account is newer, but she's not quite as good as she was in the past. And even that, I don't think she was all that good for the average player. It was more like for whales. If you really needed a quick wave one clear, you could use her for that, but it's a free unit. Plus you also have the ability to get her costume for free. And I believe you're also able to get the mash all the statesmen collaboration CE as well. Those should be free as long as you finish America, but that is not what people are going to be caring about. The main big thing is that we're getting a ton of really strong rank up quests. I mean, in particular, Altera and Tamamo Lancer are getting very, very strong buffs. Helena Archer, I guess, is kind of getting a good step in the right direction. And then Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed, both their normal and their summer version, do get decent buffs, but it's kind of like fine for now, but please chuck them future buffs because on its own, they're still not very good, but it's a nice step in the right direction for them. For Altera, you'll be able to actually use her as a buster farmer. Now, she's not quite as good as, say, Artoria because Artoria can throw Excalibur around with the strength of a dying neutron star, but Altera is still kind of up there. You know, she's fairly decent at 28k neutral damage. Although I will say even for something like the current 90 plus node over on the NA side of things, you do have to kind of mess around with her a little bit because she can't really take out the dragon, you know, without any other buffs. If you're just using her normal buffs plus the Koi and Skya buffs, it's a bit RNG face card dependent. So for some of them at NP1, it might be a little bit of a struggle, but she's still a solid option and definitely better than having nothing. Do keep in mind, she is a 30% battery unit. So if you're gonna be using her as a buster farmer, make sure you have Oberon, make sure you get the append skill or use something like imaginary element to start off with 75%. You know, you guys know the deal with buster farming nowadays. Tama Lancer gets a very similar buff. They give her a 30% battery on her third skill, which I think is very strong for her while also removing the stun demerit off of her, which is very nice. And then they also buff her crit damage to being three turns, which I really like. I think that definitely helps Tama Lancer out a lot. She still is kind of more of a niche single target unit, someone that you wanna bring against male bosses, but you can still bring her to other areas now and she can do some decent crits, you know, depending if you're bringing double Merlin, one Merlin, one Koi and Skya, whatever have you, she'll be able to do some nice buster crits. And she'll be a little bit more consistent and the fact that she's not going to be stunning herself on her third skill and she actually has a battery for when you just need to fire that last np to take out the boss now the reason i said that Anne, bonnie and mary reed are kind of getting a step in the right direction is that the summer one is getting a battery which is kind of nice but again they definitely as a year one servant need a lot more than just a battery but again always having a battery is pretty much always going to be good and then the rider version is able to bomb stars. So they're getting an assistance to their ability as a crit servant and being a bit more consistently able to find crits, which I think is kind of nice. 
And then for Helena, I say it's good because she's able to refund NP on her own NP for the entire party, kind of like Koyan Skaya, which is very good, but I really wish they maybe did something with the skills first because the skills are really where she's kind of lacking a little bit, but at least giving her the NP damage buff as well, you know, by ranking up the NP, that can at least help her not hit like a wet paper towel. So if you like using Archer Helena, she's a little bit better, I suppose. But that's really it for the buffs that we're going to be getting. Finally, there is a summoning campaign that is bringing all of the aforementioned servants back. You'll be able to summon for Tama Lancer, Helena, and Bonnie and Mary Reed, but not the Rider version. And Altera is not going up on Raid Up, which I guess is fine because Altera is on pretty much every banner, I suppose, anyway. So it's not the biggest deal, but it is it's still kind of weird to see someone get a buff and they're just like, nah, you don't need to summon for that person. But I guess they're figuring that you can get the Ryder and Bonnie and Mary Reed and Altera on any banner, so why bring them around? So instead, they also brought Da Vinci Ryder around, normal Da Vinci, Caster Marie, who's kind of interesting, and then Astolfo Saber, and also the normal Astolfo. So again, don't know why you couldn't have chucked and Bonnie and Mary Reed on there just to have it make a little bit of sense, but whatever. If you want Astolfo, he's going to be going up on Raid Up. If you really do have to summon for any one of these servants, I would say the one that is most worth summoning for is Da Vinci Rider. She is still insanely good, especially if you want to use her outside of arts looping because she already does that like an absolute dream but if you want to bring her to cqs or some kind of janky challenge quest she could be very good in that because she just gives so much np back to the entire party you know she's also increasing the overcharge level of the entire party as well so people like tamamos give you more np castoria gives you more solemn defense just a very very strong effect in general but again do also keep in mind that we're going to be getting a castoria rate up in about like three four weeks here then charlemagne's going to release then you have ruler moriarty then you have arcui then you have the summer servant so with that being kind of around the corner i don't know if da vinci rider is worth going for i mean she's definitely good enough to pull for but some of these other servants are definitely more high value than her i would say but everyone on the banner at least five stars are going to be pretty decent you know tama lancer can you can get some decent mileage out of her leonardo da vinci she's getting very very strong over on the jp side of things with all the buffs they've been tossing her so she's more like an investment if you do want to pull for her but really aside from that that's all we're getting for the pre-release campaign again I know a lot of people are kind of being Debbie Downers about the event because oh, it's not a super hype release, you know, who really cares about Super Bunyan? She's not bad, but she is how I would say painfully mid, which almost makes the release worse. I'd rather the servant just kind of be blatantly bad almost because then it's almost just not as disappointing of what could have been, you know, we could have actually had a really strong servant, but she's fine. You know, if you end up pulling for her, you can get some decent mileage out of her, I suppose. But the real shining gem is that the event itself is pretty strong. Again, being able to mine and dig out for things as you kind of go through the event is just very good. You know, you're just getting free materials as you farm the event which after the sea monsters crisis event i'm gonna say is a breath of fresh air because farming for those cone is an absolute nightmare i don't want to farm any more cone and if the jp side of things voted for this to get a rerun of all things i am going to lose my marbles but starting to ramble here let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know if you're going to be pulling for anybody in the comments as well. I'll probably do a video on someone like, say, Tama Lancer and maybe Da Vinci Rider because I think Tama Lancer gets hate on a little too much and I do really like using her. But then again, maybe I'm just a fox simp. Who really knows? But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice rest of your day and I'll catch you guys on the flippity floppity.